Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. My name's Arash. I'm an alcoholic. And, um, yeah, I'm a sober alcoholic today, and, I, you know, yesterday I celebrated uh, 10 years sober, and I just can't believe it. You know, I cannot believe that a hopeless alcoholic of my type, you know, who, you know, I mean, you know, just a, the very thought of a day sober used to terrify me. You know, the very idea of, of just being sober at all scared the living shit out of me. You know, that's the kind of alcoholic I am. You know, I found life impossible with or without alcohol. And yet, you know, by having a sponsor, thank you, Wayne, for uh, being my sponsor all this time, uh, but by having a sponsor and taking the steps and doing the daily suggestions that my sponsor gave me, um, basically, you know, I haven't uh, been tempted to have an alcoholic drink in 10 years, and I can put my hand on my heart and say that, you know, um, it's been easy to uh, stay sober. And that, you know, when I was new and people were saying that, I just thought, you can't be like me. You know, if you can stand there and say you're even a week sober and you found it easy, never mind, you know, any amount of years, then you can't have been as bad as me. Do you know what I mean? But when I heard the people's stories, you know, I realized that they were as bad as me. And, you know, for, for but, you know, the only thing, the only reason, you know, I, I'm sober today is the 12 steps, you know, daily suggestions from, from my sponsor and a strong home group. You know, thank God for this home group and thank God for the uh, discipline of uh, Wayne's uh, sponsorship and, and, you know, the uh, sponsorship that's, that's available in this group, basically, because, you know, when I was drinking, I didn't go for a week um beer or, you know, weak alcohol. I didn't do the old uh, uh, Carling Black Label or whatever it is. What was that really crap stuff? I, I can't remember. <laughs> I, I didn't drink it anyway. I, I drank the, the really strong stuff, you know, and uh, because I wanted to get pissed, basically. So if I want to stay recovered, you know, I can't be doing, you know, crappy kind of watered down recovery and this is you know this is you know exactly like nick said you know th this this home group's my my sanctuary you know i, I uh, take it seriously basically because this is where i recovered and this is where the uh, message was carried to me and you know it's just a privilege to uh try and carry it you know myself so i'll, I'll just talk a bit about what makes me an alcoholic um, when I start drinking, I can't stop. I, I get physical craving, which kicks in when the, the smallest, tiniest amount of alcohol that I drink will set off um, this craving. And, you know, I have to drink more and more and more, and, and there's just no telling where or when it's going to end. Basically, that's not the only thing that makes me an alcoholic. If that was it, I wouldn't need Alcoholics Anonymous. If the only thing that made me alcoholic was this craving, which just makes me keep drinking, then surely the the way to uh, stop that would be to just not have that first drink and not get the craving, not end up in, in trouble. But no, you know, what makes me a serious, hopeless alcoholic is that however bad things got, however much I disgraced myself, however much I wrecked my life and other people's lives around me, however many times I woke up battered and bruised, terrified, absolutely petrified, you know, uh, and just shaking like a leaf, not knowing which way to turn because I've done it this time. No matter how many times I did this, I would always do it again. I would, you know, I just could not learn from, you know, the, the mistakes and the uh, terrible kind of wreckage of my uh, drinking. You know, it was impossible for me to leave it alone because, you know, uh, willpower for someone like me is absolutely useless because what happened was uh, uh, I would always make it all right to drink. You know, what use is willpower 
when here I am saying it wasn't that bad. You know, what do I need to, to not drink for? I'm not going to do that again. I'm not going to get sectioned again. You know, I'm not going to do whatever again. It's going to be all right. Or the other thing that makes me an alcoholic, which also makes willpower useless, is that, um, you know, my life was unmanageable. Um, I found a sober life. Um, well, A, it was impossible and it was completely out of the question, but it was also crap. It was boring. You know, I mean, I, I just didn't like being sober. You know, uh, there were times when I might have been scared off drinking for like a few days or whatever, you know. Um, and, and at those times, you know, I was like that, that, that boy whistling in the dark that it talks about in the uh, basic text of Alcoholics Anonymous, where I'd be thinking, well, I don't need it anymore. I'm all right now. Do you know what I mean? But the time and place would always come when I'd just I'd either see other people drinking and I'd be jealous or I'd just be tense and I'd be wound up. I'd be frustrated. I'd be depressed, angry. It could be anything. Or it could be the opposite. I might think, well, actually, I'm feeling all right now. So what's the problem? You know, I can just have a couple of drinks and I can be even more, more okay. You know, and then I'd have one and I'd just keep going and going and, and I'd wake up a few weeks later with everything just down the toilet. You know, I've lost everything, the flat, the girlfriend, the job or whatever it is I had, you know, and this cycle went on for years and years, you know, but when I first started drinking, it wasn't quite like that. You know, there'd be a few problems, but, um, you know, I essentially... You know, I felt different to everybody else right from an early age. You know, I hated school, which, you know, a lot of kids hate school. But, you know, for me, it was definitely the worst years of my life. And I remember when people used to say, these are the best days of your life. And I just think, Jesus, it gets worse. You know, <laughs> I can't believe it. This is as good as it gets. <laughs> so, you know, I felt wrong right from day one. And uh, so I was an alcoholic before I even picked up an alcoholic drink. You know, because um, I just wasn't adjusted to life. You know, when I found alcohol, it just made me feel better. You know, I just fitted in and people just didn't piss me off quite so much. Or I, or I didn't care, if, you know, if, if he was thinking this or she was doing that or whatever, you know. But, you know, with alcoholism, unfortunately, it's, you know, uh, progressive illness. So those early highs of the early years, you know, couldn't be repeated, you know, because I'd get into more and more trouble, I'd need to drink more and more, you know, so basically to cut a long story short, you know, um, what happened is I bumped into an old friend who, who's actually Alexis, who's not here tonight, but, you know, I owe that man my life, you know, I, I owe my life, I really do, because he, he was my uh, drinking buddy back in the day, and uh, he'd sobered up, he, he'd been sober for a few years, and I bumped into him, we had a chat and he, 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 he brought me to Alcoholics Anonymous and the, the first few weeks or the first couple of months, I wasn't doing anything, you know, and I don't know how I eventually got step one. I really don't. It's, it really puzzles me to, to this very day. I mean, rarely have we seen anybody recover who had a crap attitude like mine in the early days. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, all, all the people I've seen who were as, as, you know, just, I mean, I was defiant, I was angry, I was depressed, I just wasn't having it. I mean, you know, I was on medication, so I wasn't really thinking straight, you know, and, and you know, but thank God, you know, I, I, I took that medication down to the point where it was zero, and it was th at that point where I, I just started to um, follow my sponsor's suggestions because I knew that was it when that medication runs out I'm screwed do you know what I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have anything between me and the world that is it I'm gonna have to do something do you know what I mean and and you know when the pain got bad enough basically that's all it comes down to basically when the pain got bad enough I just did what was being suggested you know regardless of like what I thought about it because for a long time I was arguing in my head and just thinking, well, this ain't right, that's not right. You know, how's this going to help? You know, you, you've given me a list of daily suggestions. You know, how's that going to help? You know, I've had such a crap life. You know, I've got so many problems, you know, and you seriously think that that bit of paper 
with these suggestions is going to... But you know what? It worked. <laughs> you know, when the, when the pain got bad enough and I did it, you know, the, you know, thought of alcohol started to uh, slip away until I got to a point where I think I was about a, a few days in, I was just, just watching TV uh, on my own and I just thought, I haven't thought of a drink today. It obviously works. And then I didn't just have to take your word for it. You know, I was getting some experience of it myself. And these daily suggestions, you know, praying for a sober day, um, writing a gratitude list, reading the uh, basic text of Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, the Just for Today card, getting to my home group uh, on time, 6.30. It's got to be 6.30. Do you know what I mean? It's not that much to ask for. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not that much to ask at all. You know, I mean, the, the results have just been incredible. You know, I can't believe, you know, how well these daily suggestions and the 12 steps have worked. You know, basically getting to my home group, uh, doing service, you know, making phone calls, ringing my sponsor, and then giving thanks for a sober day at the end of the night and and writing more on the uh, gratitude list. And, um, you know, when like I said, when, when I got desperate enough, I did it. Do you know what I mean? And thank God I had nowhere else to go, basically. And I, I kept hearing that that message. And, and I don't know what happened, but at some point I started to actually act on the information that I was hearing. You know, and thank God for that. Do you know what I mean? And, and I, you know, I'm just so grateful that for some reason I've just stuck to it, you know, through thick and thin, you know, whether times have been good or bad. You know, I haven't changed the uh, game plan. I've, I've kept the same sponsor kept the same home group and you know um because you know because you know the kind of alcoholic thinking that i've got you know if 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 if, if i uh, let go of the uh, things that have, have have kept me sober then all it will take is just one thing and i'll just kind of think well i got away with it you know if i if i stop bringing my sponsor if i stop if if i miss you know, a couple of meetings, then next time it will be something else. You know, I just think, well, I got away with it then, so I'll miss out this bit, you know what I mean? And, and then I'm going to be in trouble because, you know, basically I, I can't afford to uh, go down that road. And, you know, for the, the, the last 10 years, I mean, I've, I've seen the most incredible things happen in my life. And there's also been lots of things that have gone wrong, you know, but it, 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 it's not been a veil of tears. That's been the difference, you know what I mean? If, if I've gone for a job and I haven't got it, or if I've started on some kind of career and through no fault of my own it's come to an end, you know, I haven't needed to uh, go and get drunk. Basically, I've got a sponsor to talk to. And, you know, it's the tough love that's, that's uh, kept me sober. If he just said, oh, you poor thing, you know, uh, take a week off, you know, uh, don't bother with any meetings or suggestions or newcomers, you know, just, just take it easy. You're obviously upset. Uh, I'd be drunk by now. Do you know what I mean? And I do know people who've said that to sponsees. I mean, I'm not in this group, thank God, you know, but I've heard people saying, well, you know, I've, uh, I've, had, I've had a stressful week and my uh, sponsors told me to uh, take it easy. And I'm like, you know, that, you know, I, I just end up drunk. You know, I need to get more involved. You know, if I've got stuff on my mind, I need to, to do more of the suggestions. I need to, you know, and thank God for uh, Wayne's uh, sponsorship because, you know, He's, you know, he's showed me what to do. He's, you know, and that's putting the actions, you know, go and work with a newcomer. And that's not because I'm a nice guy. Do you know what I mean? I don't go out and work with newcomers or, or try and 12-step people or do service at the courts or whatever because I'm a nice guy. I do it because it saves my ass, basically. It stops me from thinking about myself. And, you know, that's what I need to do as part of my uh, program, basically, you know, I, I can't stand still. I have to constantly be doing stuff. You know, I have to do my uh, suggestions and, you know, I, I, I need to try and put myself out and, and actually do stuff because, you know, that is, is, is what keeps me sober, basically. And uh, I mean, I've, I've tried all sorts of things before Alcoholics Anonymous and none of it even dented the problem, not even slightly. It, it didn't even make a a bit of difference, you know. Um, I had counsellors and psychiatrists. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with counsellors and psychiatrists, but for a, a, an alcoholic of my type 
talking about my problems and just leaving it at that. And then being told it's this guy's fault or that guy's fault. It's just like pouring petrol, um, pouring pe no, putting fire in petrol or something like that anyway. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I remember going to, to see like counsellors and just moaning and whinging about my life. And I, I didn't hold anything back. You know, I mean, I wasn't one of these people who was really proud and I, I can't really relate to this thing of, oh, men don't really talk about my, you know, their feelings. I couldn't stop bloody talking about my feelings, do you know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I, I couldn't get any more in touch with my feelings if I tried, you know. But, you know, and I'd go and talk and I'd moan and, you know, I'd walk away from that, all wound up and angry and just gagging for, for, for another drink, do you know what I mean? But what I've got in Alcoholics Anonymous is something the opposite of that, do you know what I mean? I've worked, I've worked the steps and I take my inventory, you know, step four and, and step eight. Um, no, s step ten, step eight. <laughs> We're all about that. Uh, I'm just a bit confused because I'm a bit nervous. Um, you know, taking inventory and, and like basically getting honest about my defects of character and then, you know, praying to have them removed or working with a newcomer, recognizing that it's my defects of character that make me angry, not what that, that guy's done, you know. And it's not always easy to see, you know. It, it isn't always easy to see, but, you know, that's what I've got my sponsor for, and that's what I've got the inventory for, and, you know, and that's why I do service, because, you know, if all else fails, work with a newcomer, basically. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd, ha I'd had all sorts of um, advice and kind of, psychiatry and stuff. I had one guy who uh, said to me, uh, the, there's a wise old man inside your, your mind and, you know, listen to the voice of that wise old man. What's he, what's he telling you to do, you know? And I tried to listen to the wise old man. He told me to go out and get pissed and smash up my flag. <laughs> I mean, you know, a, a crazy alcoholic can't be listening to some wise old man in their head. That's the last thing I need to do. I'm, I'm mental, you know, I need to listen to my sponsor and just basically work this program, you know. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I tried all sorts of stuff. And, you know, the, just the regular stuff, which I now know lots of alcoholics do, which is moving around, moving from town to town or um, one flat to another or, you know, changing various parts of my life to, to see if that, you know, could make any difference. But it didn't, you know. And thank God I know... Um, Deep down inside, like every fiber of me is an alcoholic. Basically, that is what I am, a hundred percent. I know that you know whatever my situation is, um, where, whether I've got a girlfriend or not, or if I've got a job or if I haven't, or if I'm living with friends or on my own or whatever, I, whatever I happen to be doing, you know, without if if I don't work the steps, you know, if I don't do these, these daily suggestions, I'll drink myself to death. And that is it. You know, it, my alcoholism, my drinking has got nothing to do with circumstances or situations. It's got nothing to do with any kind of lifestyle. It's not because, you know, uh, I, I see it around me or, or whatever. Do you know what I mean? I used to find ways of drinking where, you know, I've I drink in the most stupid situations where nobody else is drinking. Do you know what I mean? It, it was never anybody else's fault that I drank. It's me. I'm an alcoholic, and that is the end of it, basically. I know that now, and I'm so grateful for knowing that, you know, because uh, like someone else said earlier, you know, I was always, br uh, you know, blaming other people for, for, for my drinking, you know, and um, it was always to do with, like, my past or my present or even this future that I was terrified of. Do you know what I mean? Um, and it was always, well, if you had a life like mine, you would drink. Do you know what I mean? But now I know that, you know, the only reason I drank like I did is because I'm an, I'm an alcoholic and that's it. Do you know what I mean? And, and the way uh, for me, you know, the, the, the only thing that's worked is taking the steps. The only thing um, that's, that's taken that away, you know, taken that, that nagging head that always tricked me into drinking, um, the only thing that's taken that away is having a sponsor and being sponsorable, basically. It's, it's no use having a sponsor and then just doing your own thing. That ain't going to work. Do you know what I mean? You're either going to do it or you ain't. Do you know what I mean? And 
you know, thank God for this gift of desperation, basically, because, and it's a paradox, because although I'm far from desperate today, you know, I haven't um, thought about an alcoholic drink for 10 years. I haven't, you know, been tempted. I haven't had to talk my, my, myself out of it. I haven't had to have other people talking me out of it. Um, but I remember, you know, ha how desperate I was, you know, before I came to Alcoholics Anonymous. And it's a gift, do you know what I mean? Because that's what keeps me putting in the actions. You know, that is, that is the reason I get up in the morning and I do my suggestions. And, you know, and that's the reason I, I turn up to my meeting at the time my, my, my uh, sponsor wants me to turn up, you know. And that, that's the reason I do the service that he asked me to do. Because, you know, without that, if there's any lurking notion, if, if I've got any slight idea that it wasn't that bad, I ain't going to do it. Basically, it's that simple. Do you know what I mean? If, if I think for a minute that my life was all right, you know, I'm quite a nice guy, it wasn't that bad, I'm buggered. If I start thinking like that, that's the end of it because I'm not going to put in the actions. And, you know, and th th that's the, the paradox of Alcoholics Anonymous is that, um, you know, at first I thought, right, got all this stuff to do now it's like homework you know I've got a sponsor I've got this home group like when am I going to get time to you know have fun and it's like hello I wasn't having any fun you know <laughs> nobody wanted to talk to me do you know what I mean people are just fed up with me my friends my family everyone was just like sick and tired of hearing me whinge and just seeing me destroy my life and, and often theirs as well um like year after year and it was getting worse and worse do you know what i mean but it's not much of a sacrifice you know H having a sponsor and just doing a few suggestions doing a bit of service turning up to my meeting early it's not that much to ask for it really isn't because you know the the uh obsession i had with alcohol was so powerful that i just thought nothing is ever going to take it away you know how is anything going to battle that do you know what i mean it's just too it's too much do you know what i mean it's in my head the whole time and you know and yet by doing these things you know by being sponsorable by just just accepting that i know jack shit you know and somebody else knows how to recover just by accepting that you know it it, it basically happened you know the the desire to drink just went completely oh my god it's half past already <laughs> that went really quick, you know, and, and I've lived out my dreams, basically. I've done things, you know, I was always into music before, but I was always cocking it up because I was drunk and kind of getting into arguments and fights with people. I've, I've managed to, you know, make something of that on a, a, a sort of small level, I suppose, but I've, I've kind of got out and about and done it, you know. Um, but the most important thing is, you know, I, I, I feel okay myself. I, I don't feel wrong anymore. I, I feel at peace with myself. I'm comfortable in my own skin. Um, and, you know, I enjoy being sober. And, um, you know, I never thought that was ever going to happen. I mean, you know, that's the other thing I just thought was just, how is anybody, go, you know, how, you know, how are these people in the uh, meeting, uh, how, you know, how do they expect me to believe that, you know, they're, they're enjoying being sober. I mean, it just seemed impossible, you know, but just by, you know, working the steps, by maintaining it, you know, by uh, remaining sponsorable and just, you know, uh, keeping my home group as the, the, the place I respect, you know what I mean? I, I, it's exactly like, like you know, Nick said, I, you know, I, I just behave differently here, you know, just because this is where, you know, I've, recovered basically so if you're new get a sponsor and just for god's sake you know just listen to them you know what i mean because if you're new if you've screwed up your life you know if you're anything like me you don't have a choice it's going to get worse basically so you, you're either going to do it or you ain't you know my advice is you know it works you know and, and you'll hear it you'll you'll hear lots of other people saying exactly the same thing and it's, it's not a coincidence you know i mean we've all got different backgrounds different life stories you know, um, so the consequences of our drinking might, might be different. But, you know, the one thing is, you know, we all messed up our lives and we ended up here and we, you know, basically worked the steps, got a sponsor and, you know, 
and we enjoy being sober now and 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 that's it that's that's all i've got to say to anybody who's new basically and it's the only reason i'm here is basically to uh try and get that message across and say how, how very grateful i am to uh be a member of this home group and uh thanks again wayne for, for being my sponsor and nick big up the uh class of 2001 which is just me and him now so uh, i'll leave it there thank you very much thank you my name's arash i'm an alcoholic uh, yesterday uh, marked 15 years since i last took an alcoholic drink um or any mind-altering drugs and um i can't believe it to be quite honest with you well i can believe it, it's through coming here but um you know, I was a desperate alcoholic. I mean, the thought of leaving alcohol alone just for a day terrified me. So basically, in a nutshell, I didn't get where I am today without proper sponsorship, thanks to Wayne. And thank you, Wayne, for not um, compromising on the uh, solution. You know, thank you for refusing to uh, water it down, you know, despite all the, the crap, you know, that... Uh, and uh, the lies and the bullshit that are kind of thrown um, at this group. And I, I don't mean to start, you know, my share on a negative thing, but, you know, but basically thank you to the old timers and to everybody here for continuing to carry, um, you know, the hardcore message of, of recovery. And I say a hardcore because it's, it's the effective message of recovery from the big book not the crap sort of Mickey Mouse version, the uh, the one that works, the one that's been working for lots of people here. And uh, it's been working for me for the last 15 years. I mean, it still sounds mental, me saying that, basically. But, um, you know, it, it, it's like I think uh, Gavin or John or perhaps both of you said, uh, I had to throw in the towel, you know, I had to realize that um, I couldn't live drunk and I couldn't live sober. You see, my alcoholism is, isn't just about my drinking. My alcoholism is also about not drinking. Without this program, um, I can't stay sober. Without this program, if I try not to drink, it's torture. Um, my problem uh, starts when I stop drinking. Um, that's the, the, you know, I was caught in this endless... Um, kind of cycle year after year of uh, smashing my life to bits because of my drinking and then trying to get help and then being told, well, just don't drink and then just hating my life. Just, you know, uh, because without alcohol um, and without this program, you know, uh, without, um, you know, by just not drinking, I start to get depressed, I start to get um, restless, I start to get bored, I start to get pissed off with people, you know, uh, I start to look at other people drinking and I'm thinking, the bastards, why can't I do that? Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, temptation isn't the word for it. I mean, you know, without this program, it is just impossible for me to stay sober. And yet, the good news is, you know, by uh, following a few simple suggestions, um, by putting it first, by taking it seriously, by putting in the actions um, of Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, which is going through the steps, doing daily suggestions and services, as the other guys talked about, uh, by doing all of that, the desire to drink um, was lifted from me. Um, right from the, the very start of my, uh, you know, coming to alcoholics. Some of us, well, as soon as I started to actually do something about my alcoholism, the first few weeks, you know, nothing was changing because I wasn't allowing myself to actually be sponsored. So, um, you know, the moment uh, I started to, um, you know, take it seriously and do the uh, daily suggestions, which is like, like uh, I think Gav or Nige said, um, things that I didn't necessarily believe in at first. I mean, um, it just looked too too kind of wishy-washy. I just thought, that ain't going to cut it. You know, I've, I've got a lifetime of just disaster, <laughs> lifetime of misery, lifetime of failure, lifetime of... Uh, just disgracing myself and just hurting people 
you know, by going back to the drink time and time and time again. Do you seriously think, you know, these daily suggestions and this book is going to take that away? I've tried everything. I've changed this, I've changed that. Nothing made any difference. But the good thing is, you know, um, by hearing you lot um, talk about it and by seeing clearly that it's working for you, and, you know, thank you, Alexis, for uh, carrying this message to me because uh, Alexis was my drinking buddy. Uh, we were uh, best mates at school, and then we were uh, best drinking buddies after that. And uh, when I saw that, you know, he's staying sober, um, I mean, just the way he was was just, just carrying the uh, message to me without him having to kind of tell me in, in detail. You know, I knew he was coming here. And, uh, and I knew that he drank like me because I drank with him lots of times, you know. So, but by seeing the evidence before me, that's when I realized that, okay, although I don't particularly believe it, you know, I'm going to give it a try because I haven't got anything else, you know. And as soon as I, I did that, you know, that's when the, uh, fog was lifted, as it were, you know, uh, I lost the desire to drink, um, my sponsor, to, you know, started to take me through the steps. But by coming here to, to a, a strong home group, a disciplined home group, I've been inspired to uh, put in the actions um, by the old timers and, you know, newer people like Knight, you know, who speak enthusiastically about their uh, recovery. You know, uh, Jason as well, you know, who I, I heard share for the first time a couple of days ago. Fantastic, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kept working for me for years. Uh, um, I was, was talking to, to uh, my cousin last week about it, and, and he was saying, um, in fact, my, my, my whole family loves Alcoholics Anonymous. I mean, it, uh, because they can see what it's done for me. And uh, it's pretty much, I was thinking about this the, the other day, it's pretty much the only thing that doesn't cause arguments in our family we're just like a bunch of kids, like, you know, you name it, we'll argue about it. But, you know, the one thing where they'll all just say, oh, wow, I'm really glad you, you are doing that. It's Alcoholics Anonymous. I never get any shit for that, basically. Um, because they can see it works. You know, they knew what I was like before. They know what I'm like now. They do not question it. Um, I was talking to my cousin the other day, and he was going, you know, I'm really glad, you know, that you, you are doing this. And, 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 you know, I can see it's very good for you. He goes, um, even though, to me, it looks a bit weird. And I said, well, guess what? I'm bloody weird. Do you know what I mean? Because, you know, uh, what sort of person goes back to the very same thing that keeps harming them over and over and over again, year after year after year, um, what sort of person uh, just ignores, like, the advice of um, all their friends and their, their family and girlfriends and mates or whatever who would beg and plead with me, like, Jesus Christ, don't do it again. You know what happened last time. You ended up sectioned. You ended up smashing up your flat. You ended up, um, you know, verbally abusing all these people and just saying the most horrible, nasty, like, spiteful, bloody things. You know, you... You ended up in hospital last time you drank. And I would just say, what are you on about? It's not going to be th that bad this time, you know. I, it's going to be different, you know. I'm not going to put myself through that. I'm not going to put you through that. I'm just going to have a drink. You know, what sort of bloody weirdo does that? You know, uh, that kind of drinking, you know, that kind of thinking ain't going to go away by me just hanging around with some nice people. You know, that kind of drinking and thinking is not going to go away by me just coming to meetings. You know, that kind of thinking is not going to go away by me having a nice job, having a nice girlfriend, moving here, moving there, changing this, changing that. You know, because I tried all of that and my life just got worse and worse and worse year after year after year. And um, basically, my alcoholism consists of three things. Um... A physical craving, uh, or what the big book calls the phenomenon of, of craving, uh, which is kind of a extreme word, phenomenon, you know. Um, 
And that means when I start drinking, I can't stop. I get a physical craving. You know, the, the smallest amount of alcohol that enters my system will trigger off a physical reaction which makes me want more and more and more. And I don't care, you know, where I'm, you know, if I've got no money, I don't care if I've got something important to do later on that day or the next, you know, day or whatever. I don't care who I'm with, you know, the kind of company that I'm with or whatever. You know, my alcoholism has got nothing to do with my surroundings or, you know, any of that. It's got nothing to do with my upbringing. It's got, you know, I'm very grateful for, for knowing that now. Anyway, the physical craving is triggered off when I pick up an alcoholic drink. But that isn't it. That's not the only thing that makes me an alcoholic. If that was it, if the physical craving was the only thing that makes me an alcoholic, I wouldn't need to be here. I wouldn't need to be an alcoholic synonymous because then I could take all that advice of the people who say, well, you know, this happens when you drink, just don't do it. And I would just be able to not do it and everything would be all right. Wrong, because I'm an alcoholic. The other two things, the other two parts of my alcoholism um, made sure that I kept picking up the drink time and time again. One is the um, uh, the obsession around the first drink, as Gav said, you know, um, uh, uh, we're powerless over alcohol, and, you know, I've got an insanity which precedes the first drink. And the insanity, you know, is not necessarily the the mad things that, that I did when I was drinking. It's that thing of picking it up, you know, knowing full well that this is not a good idea. It's, uh, it's the way I would justify um, the reason for another drink, you know, despite the disaster that happened last time. You know, that's, 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 that's the obsession around uh, the uh, drink, you know, um, the taken of the first drink and uh, so you know no amount of willpower can uh, succeed against that kind of thinking because however much I say I'm not going to do it once that little voice in my head says uh, it'll be alright you know it will just drown out every good reason for not drinking uh, that will be the big voice that, oh, it'll be all right, it wasn't so bad. That's going to be like that. Whereas, you know, all the good reasons for not doing it are, are going to be down there somewhere. They're just not going to get heard. So, yeah. And the third thing that makes me an alcoholic, uh, which I kind of talked about earlier, um, is the spiritual malady or broken down into kind of different language is just basically, you know, my life is unmanageable. It means that uh, it's not enough for me to just not drink. That ain't going to fix my problem. By simply not drinking, things are not going to get better, you know, by just leaving it at that. You know, medication ain't going to do jack shit. It's just going to send me a little bit dizzy, and I'll drink on top of that. And then I'll get even worse, you know. Um, uh, talking about it isn't going to do anything. You know, I'll talk about my problems. I'll talk about all the stuff that's been pissing me off all my life, my childhood, and then I get more and more wound up. And then guess what? When I'm wound up, I'm going to have a drink. You know, <laughs> so uh, those three things make me an alcoholic. And if, you, if you're a newcomer, you can relate to those three. There's good news and there's bad news. The bad news is it gets worse. It doesn't just go away. You know, it wasn't a, uh, a phase that I was going through. It wasn't like on TV where you see like these dramas or kind of soap operas where someone's doing really well and all of a sudden their girlfriend leaves them and oh, their whole life goes down the toilet and they start hitting the drink and oh, I'm an alcoholic now, you know. For me, it was just, you know, I wasn't right to start with, you know, uh, like the other guys talked about. Like as far back as I remember, uh, I was mental, you know, as, as a child, you know. I didn't feel all right, and myself, I didn't feel the same as the other, I feel like um, uh, the same as I thought the other kids did, I mean, whether or not they did, you know, it, um, I can't read their minds, but, uh, you know, it felt like they were okay, and I wasn't, you know, so um, so that that kind of um, state of mind just stayed with me, and, and it's that state of mind that I fed with alcohol, basically, um, 
So to take the alcohol away and just leave it at that, that state of mind is going to stay. Basically, it's not going to go away by simply not drinking. But the good news is, by getting a sponsor and going through the steps, um, by doing daily suggestions and service and all the other stuff, which I thought sounded so naff, you know, that's what works. You know, I, I've been staying sober comfortably for uh, 15 years, and that's mental. And that's not to say that, you know, there's not been any problems in my life, but it's just been different, you know. I mean, even when I've been at my most stressed out, and, and there's been some, some situations, you know, especially recently, uh, I don't want to go into it, basically. Um, but, you know, I've, I've felt like, Jesus Christ, you know. Um, but at no point have I thought, I better have a drink. You know, again, it's not like the TV where, uh, like, somebody's like, oh, God, you know, I'm going to have a drink, and he picks up the phone, and all his mates are like, oh, don't do it, don't do it. You know, that doesn't happen, you know. Um, I, I don't want a drink. You know, it's weird to try and describe it to a new person, but, um, you know, the desire to drink alcohol has been lifted. Um and I've done some incredible things, well, some, you know, incredible opportunities have come my way over the last few years, which, you know, I put down to working this program 100%. I mean, I, I've lived out my dreams. I mean, there's, there's no two ways about it. I mean, uh, my interests are in music. I mean, that's not the job I do, but I've been able to follow up some uh, kind of, um, well, sounds a bit corny, but kind of teenage kind of dreams that I had. You know, I've met up with, with people that I used to have records by um, when I was at school, and I've, I've joined bands with them, and I've made records with them, and I've done gigs abroad with them, and I've gone all around the country playing gigs with them. And I mean, it's mental. You know, I mean, uh, there's a, a friend on Facebook that um, popped up about a year ago, and and I hadn't uh, had spoke to him for about 25 years. And uh, when he asked me what I'd been up to, and I told him, and he said, if, if the 19-year-old you could hear what you're saying now, he wouldn't believe you. I'm not saying this to a show off. Basically, I'm the guy who would get thrown out of a pub or a gig venue as soon as I walked in. Towards the end of my drinking, I would get barred from a venue, if I was just going there to actually watch a gig, not not even play. I mean, never mind that. I mean, that, that was a whole different nightmare. I mean, towards the end of my drinking, the, the, the last few years of my drinking, when I was trying to do music, I couldn't even make it to a, a rehearsal. You know, I, I'd start drinking in the morning, and by the time I'd got to the rehearsal, I couldn't pick up the bloody guitar. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and I'd just, you know, I'd pick it up, and I'd make a bloody awful noise. I'd have to put it down again. And just collapse, you know. I mean, that, that's, that's the kind of, of, uh, place that my drinking took me to. I'm a blackout drinker. I, I will drink until I don't know what day it is. I don't know what week it is. I don't, don't know what month it is. I don't know if it's, the, if it's day or night. You know, I'd wake up with cold sweats, like not knowing where the hell I'd been. How did I get home? Who was I with? What did I say? What did I do? Do you know what I mean? Who, who did I harm? How the hell did I get these bruises and these cuts? Do you know what I mean? Um, how the hell have I lost my home? How the hell have I ended up in this cell? Do you know what I mean? That's how I drink. You know, when I drink, it ain't nice. Um, so, uh, you know, thank God for, for the Road to Recovery group. You know, thank God for the disciplined way that we work this program. Because we do it for the result. Do you know what I mean? Um, so when you hear all these like kind of like people who, who don't get what we do and they try and slag it off, they're a bunch of idiots. You know, stay away from people like that because you know I don't do like you know I don't work my program because like I really enjoy you know well actually I do enjoy working it in a very disciplined way, but at first I didn't. You know, it wasn't like what. Well, you know what, I'm going to give myself to this program because I'm the sort of person who really likes to get somewhere on time. You know, I'm really the sort of person who likes to, uh, you know, follow someone else's suggestions. No, 
I'm the exact opposite. You know, I don't get anywhere on time. I don't follow suggestions. But when it comes to this, I do. And um, it's got me into a good practice because the way that, you know, our group is so so disciplined, you know, I can take those sort of principles outside into my job and into, like, uh, the... Uh, uh, degree course that I did a few years ago, which I'm extremely grateful for. That's another bloody miracle. Me doing a degree? Are you kidding? Do you know what I mean? I'm the sort of guy who, after about a day, I'm like, this is boring. I hate him. I hate her. I hate that tutor. I like, sob the lot of you. I'm off. Do you know what I mean? To like go, go, go to a college like for three years and actually finish it with a degree, like me. Duh, do you know what I mean? That is this program. It ain't nothing else because I'm not like that. I don't do stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, you know, I've taken that same, well, I've tried to, you know, take that same principle of turning up on time, doing the service, you know, trying to be disciplined. Um, I've tried to kind of take that into my, um, like, work and kind of, you know, college courses and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I've been doing the same job for a five years, that's a bloody miracle. Do you know what I mean? Because I work with people with problems. And the sort of person I am without this program, you tell me you've got a problem, and I'm like, dude, you think you've got a problem. You try being me for a day. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You ain't got nothing on me. You know, and yet, you know, I've been doing this job for five years, and um, they haven't managed to get rid of me yet, you know. And, and it's just the weirdest thing, you know, having appraisals and my, my uh, manager saying, oh, yeah, you know, such and such as says, says uh, uh, nice things about you. Here's, here's a bit of feedback from one of your colleagues. I'm like, are you kidding? I'm just the angriest, most resentful, <laughs> rudest person there is, you know. And yet I managed to kind of, you know, do okay because I'm working with this program. I mean, I ain't no saint, believe me, you know. Um, I, I get things uh, horrendously wrong, but uh, through a series of like disciplined actions, like you know, daily suggestions, praying for a sober day, you know, ringing newcomers, ringing my sponsor, writing a gratitude list, going through the steps, doing service. Ah, oh, I meant to plug the uh, court service, didn't I? Um, I've got to try and carry the message of recovery to the still suffering alcoholic. How long have I got, Jim? 2.40, right, okay, I'll try and get it in. Right, part of what keeps me sober is trying to carry the message of recovery to the still-suffering alcoholic. Um, there's various ways of doing that, you know, by sharing, obviously that's one way, you know, doing the, um, like, phone line. I mean, it, 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 it helps me, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to help. But, another, you know, we, we do court service, basically. We go to the magistrate's courts uh, on a Wednesday morning and we try and help people who've... Uh, who've ended up in there because of their drinking. You know, it's my duty to, to try and kind of do things like that. And, and at the moment, it's very sad. The service that we've been doing for a few years, is it, it's dying on its ass. We need more people to come forward. So if you've done your step five, you know, um, we, we, you know we uh, need you down the courts to, uh, you know, do service. Because, you know, there, there's people who go, you know, coming... Um, into various like services because of their drinking and all they're getting is don't drink you know for an alcoholic of my type that ain't going to do nothing being told don't drink it's not going to stop me from doing it you know i will go back to it time and time and time again there's people who are ending up in in probation services or down the courts or in prison or whatever you know and the only help they're getting when they come out of it is um write it all down in a diary Write down how much you drink. Are you kidding me? You know, I ain't going to stop drinking because I'm writing down how much I'm drinking on a bloody piece of paper. Do you know what I mean? My alcoholism couldn't give a toss about the the safe limit and units and all that crap. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm powerless over alcohol. I'm powerless over alcohol. I cannot decide that I can't drink just because I've been told, it's bad. Wow, it's bad? Well, I thought it was good, you know. Oh, now that you told me it's bad, I'm going to stop doing it. Great. Like, what a load of old rubbish, you know. I need something to take away the desire to drink, and that's the 12 steps. And it only works for an alcoholic of my type 
with proper hardcore road to recovery sponsorship. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Alexis, for passing the uh, uh, message on to me, for carrying that message uh, to, to me and being a good example. And thank you, all of you, for uh, inspiring me to uh, continue um, on this uh, journey and to, to, to uh, continue to put in the actions. If you're new, you don't know how lucky you are. If you're here and, you know, all you've got to do now is just put in the actions. You know, the inspiration is all around you. The examples of how well it works, you know, that's everywhere. All you've got to do now is just get a sponsor and put in the actions. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.